All right. Hello, fellow survivors. We are back in our main run. We have forged. We have our weapons. All good stuff. Well, not this one. This one doesn't count. We have this and we have our arrowheads. We're all good. We got all our resources. It's time to head back to Trapper's Cabin. And then start making the bow. And then do some hunting. So that's what the goal is for now. So let's... Prepare to get going. It is early morning, so it's going to be cold, but that's okay. I'm going to leave all this uh, stuff here. Um, we'll go back for the cash later. Um, food situation is good. Let's have a quick drink of water. And then let's just... Uh, uh, let's see how long has this got left in now. I'm going to quickly make... Some teas and then we're going to just do some inventory management we're going to carry with this and we'll take the books with us we'll take all of this stuff with us we're not too heavy should be fine leaving that in here yeah and actually I could take this with I'm not that heavy yeah, okay, we'll take it with. And then let's grab some torches. Don't really have that many. It's not very good torches, but... I will have to do. Let's put another one, and then we're going to just... warm these up, in case it's very cold out there. It shouldn't be an issue. Six minutes and yeah, okay. <clears throat> we'll grab some torches while we wait for that. Uh, we could break down this box. I think it's this box. There's accelerants in there. But we're not going to do that. We don't really need it. Looks like a new day is dawning. This is quite a lot of torches. We might actually be a bit heavy with all this stuff. We'll, uh, we'll see. There we go. Let's grab this and go. Because it's very early in the morning, we're likely to be a bit cold. But I'm taking the teas with me. <clears throat> I'm gonna check these carcasses. We don't really need the carcasses as such. I mean, I could grab them. But mostly I just want the feathers. That's what I want, because I want to make more arrows. We might leave the carcasses uh, for now at least. And they can be feather generators. Every three feathers is an arrow. I'm going to leave it, and there's another one over here. I'm going to leave that too. But if I find the carcass closer to... Trappers, I might take that. You don't know any feathers? Yep, yeah, there's one. And another. And... What else? Okay, let's have a look around here. These bunkhouses. There can be some minor loot here. In the past, you could find the Haxel here and also Storm Lantern. So it's worth checking it out for that. Nothing there. Anything under? Not that I can see. Grab the lowest torch. Let's see if we got anything here. We have a start of this end. We have... Very little. Mm, I don't see anything. There's a book over there. Seems like we have just this. Oh wait, suitcase. Alright, the Polaroid. 
This is the northern one. We've already been there. All right, that was that was kind of hidden. Hey, <laughs> blended well in with the uh, the color there. Easy, easy to miss. <laughs> That's cool. All right, then we're going to take not exactly the same route back because we've already been that way. We're gonna take the route route that gives us a bit more cattails. See. There we are, handsome cattle. I think I can cross here. I think so, at least. Let's see. Oh, not that much. Go. Should be fine. Yeah, we go. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit nasal this episode. I got a little bit cold uh, earlier. And I might see it. But please forgive me if I sound a little bit rough. But, you know, it's cold out in the long dark too. So it's really just method acting. <laughs> So let's, uh, we went last time up to this other radio tower, but we've already been there, so we're not going to go there. We're instead going to go a bit more out in the open here, because there are more cartels that way. Oh, did they, <coughs> they got cold. That was fast. <laughs> That's all right, though. If we get really cold, I'll make a fire. I probably will make a fire soonish. You hear a little like beep or whatever in some of these videos. It's just me muting the microphone to cough. So that I cough as little as possible <laughs> in the microphone. <laughs> in the very first video I ever made on this channel, or rather the first gameplay walkthrough, I was coughing a lot in that. <laughs> All right, so we're back here um, at the Hunter's Blind. I'll leave those cattails over there. And uh, this is where we started. I'll make a fire soon. Just to warm up a bit. So this is where we spawned. So we're home sweet home. Went up there, found a hacksaw right away. So that was handy. And uh, this is a new spawn. You, you weren't able to spawn here before. And I spawned, was it was over here? I think it was over here by this tree. In the past, if you spawned in Fallen Muska, you would spawn on the west side. It would more or less where this cache is. That's where you would spawn. But now they changed it. So now you spawn here. I'll make a fire here, I think. Next to these cattails. And we can warm up a bit, we can reheat the teas. Uh, I'm not that bothered about using the teas to stay off cold. In the early game that's very important, or if you're traveling long distances it's important. But here, you gotta think of the context of here. Yeah, I'm a little bit cold, so I'm gonna put, put this on, you know. But, um, normally... Oops, sorry, hold on. And normally, like, uh, you want to keep your health high. But here, we're going to go to a base and then do some crafting. So we'll be warm in there for a while. Let's do this. And let's... Can I cook more teas? I can. Yep. 
And even more, so let's do that then. Put all the T's down. Uh, in this case, I do want to take too much damage, so I, I'm happy to drink a T or two. There's a lot of T's to be made from the long dark. There's you know, so many plants, so many mushrooms. Uh, it appears, I haven't tested it thoroughly, but it appears that if you drink a hot food, if you drink a reishi tea that's hot, it actually gives you more warmth than a rose sip tea or a birch tea, which is interesting. We can actually test it right now because I'm not that hot. <clears throat> so if I drink one of these rose sip tea now, just for the sake of demonstration, pay attention to my meter now. We can actually make this be easier. I can like align that meter with something like, yeah, it's touching a little piece of uh, snow there. So if I drink this now... Well, that, that filled up pretty much half, didn't it? So I'm not sure that's correct then. <laughs> so I, I was told the other day, so I'm gonna show the picture that uh, rose sips heat up very, very little. But these one heat up almost half. But as you saw there, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. That that uh, heated me up a lot. I have enough tinder. Hey, cooking level two, sweet. More calories incoming. I might grab some of this for later. Does matter if a little bit heavy. Grab some cattails here. If you wear the crampons, um, you're a little bit more resistant to the ice. I think it adds one second. I think it's something like when you go on ice that's cracking, you, uh, uh, you, I think you have four seconds before the ice breaks. Or the crampons is five seconds. Or something like that. I, I can't remember exactly. We're gonna get the cattails. Uh, we have the tools now to create the bow. But the issue is that we still need some food. Uh, to craft the bow and then of course go hunting and all that stuff. We're gonna head back to poachers camp, pick up our stuff there. We'll be a bit heavy going back, but that's okay because we're not going very far. And then we'll probably go and see if we can hunt this moose that's just here around the corner. Then we can get the moose hides egg curing. <clears throat> and then while we're doing that, you know, we can go to... Ash Canyon and Summit. Because it takes a while for those things to cure anyway. Yeah. Gonna grab all of these. You can never have too many, especially in the early game. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna drink more teas because it's only minus six and it's getting warmer. It's going to take a while before I, I get cold. Oh, there's the bear. He's out on a little walk. On my left there. Uh, you just ignore me. Cattails. What? Might hunt him later. Our first two targets should be the moose and the bear. <laughs> we can kill the bear first because the bear is by trappers. And it also takes two days longer than the moose to cure. The moose is rarer though. But I can also kill a moose on my way somewhere else. Uh, my way to somewhere else rather. I pick these up. Take them with me. Back to trappers. I'm not sure I can carry much more. Yeah, she's a bit heavy, but it's it's okay. It's okay. Let's actually drink one tea. That is exactly half now. <clears throat> How long does that heat us up? Also almost half, so yeah. It seems the same to me. Ok, 
Okay. Getting a bit heavy now, but should be right. Let's head home. I think there's a few more cartels here. Another carcass over there. I'm gonna check that carcass out. Uh, I don't really need the carcass, but I want to see if there's feathers for more arrows. I mean, I don't remember seeing a carcass over there. Running out of torches, but that's okay. Uh, there's a wolf over there. You stay away from me, Wolfie. Two wolves, okay. All right, give me some feathers. One feather. Let's see any more. Doesn't seem like it. Wow, only one feather. Oh well. Let's go home. Grab these cattails while we're at it. I'm just walking the dog here. <laughs> Pretty much ignoring him. How close is he? Eh, not particularly close. Let's grab these. Am I back to you, Wolf? Well, I'm gonna leave you alone if you leave me alone. Nobody needs to get hurt. There's a strange ape-like creature picking up cattails. Did he give up or? He did not. Sounds like he's not on me, though. Nah, he's still on me. He just stopped growling, is all. Okay, now we're definitely heavier, but that's okay. <laughs> we got a lot of cattails. This wolf shouldn't be an issue. But I'm gonna auto walk and have a sip of my coffee. For my hinterland mug. I have two long dark mugs. In my possession. I have the Hinterland mug, the one you see in the game with the coffee. And I have the Kimiota mug. I don't know if you can get the Kimiota mug anymore. I don't know. Kimiota mug is one of those heat mugs, you know, where it's just a black mug. But if you fill it up with something hot, like coffee, then it reveals on the side. It says, come on, little fire. <laughs> I won it in a raffle on Kimiota stream. Kimiota is a long dark streamer, if you don't know who that is. Very, very skilled at the game. Streams regularly. On Twitch. Come on, little fine. You can see the mug in the opening of my old streams. Anyway, enough about that. Let's uh, continue this walk. What's the day? Okay, we're approaching noon. We are warm-ish. When you play an interloper and you have cold like this, where you only have one chevron or arrow pointing down, I consider that basically being warm, you know. On an interloper, if you can walk around and this is the temperature, like it's pointing down by one chevron, that's the same as being warm because it takes so long for you to get cold. So it's the equivalent to just walking about and doing whatever you want, pretty much.
It's a good example of when you don't need to have more teas. This will possibly be the last torch. So I'm gonna save the other one. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to make the bow and some arrows. And then we're going to um hunt. We're gonna hunt the bear first. And then after we hunted the bear. We'll obviously cook the bear. We might eat a little bit of the bear. Then we're gonna see if there's a moose. My hunt some rabbits too. They have two curing in that cave, but I need two more pelts uh, and some guts to make both ra rabbit things. So I might uh, do that. So we'll probably do some hunting and while some of the stuff is curing, I'd probably go to summit, but we'll see. It depends also on the activity. If I'm hunting a lot and spending a lot of time cooking and crafting and so on, um, then we can always go to the summit later. There isn't really anything in the, on the summit that I really need because this is interloper, so loot on summit is way more limited. There is a stim up there, though, that of course I want, but that's not going to expire. There's also... Um, uh, most likely a wool toque, possibly an air wrap, and there might no. There's a book that I don't need. So there's, there's a few things there. Fire striker that's up there. I would like that, but there's nothing really urgent to collect in the uh, on the summit. Nothing I can't wait. So if we don't have anything to do, if we if we're done with everything in this area after we have the bow. And there's nothing really that needs doing at the moment. Then we can leave stuff to cure and go to summit. But if not, hey wolf. Not, then I think we will go um, and hunt some more stuff. With Mystery Lake and things. Uh, I will chain the next torch. <laughs> Just because uh, I don't want this wolf to attack me. I'm not going to run because I don't really need to because it's not cold enough. If it was colder, I would run a bit even though I'm heavy. Just to not get too cold. I, I, it could happen here that the wolf goes for a deer instead. Probably gonna spook them now, though. Go for a, go for a dip, Wolfie. If you can do that, I will change my mind and I will. Oh, there we go. Go, go, go. I'll get the deer. Oh, this one's running towards him. Who are you going for? He's going for me. Okay. Go for this guy. Look how big and juicy he is. Big juicy there. Go for him. They're going to scare this uh, there towards the wolf. Yeah, go. Run this way. He might not be able to get them. <coughs> but they are kind of trapped in a little area there. Let's see what happens. Oh, he's onto one. He's onto him. <sighs> he probably got him. Probably. I'm gonna go get that there. But first, I'm gonna drop some stuff. I'm not carrying all this stuff around. Rabbits around. Okay, good. There's a whole deer, then it's a lot of food, so it changes things a bit. Okay, we have a rabbit pelt here. We can uh, t we can cure, put down to cure. Well, actually, that might be enough now that I think about it. 
And just because I'm carrying a bunch of stuff and I want to get out there and grab that wolf and stuff very quickly. I'm just going to dump everything that I don't need here on the floor and I'll sort it out later. Drop this too. Sold all of this stuff out later. Just gonna go check on this deer. So it's likely he caught one. Let's go check. He will eat the deer until it's completely devoured, but that's gonna take a little while. With rabbits, it doesn't take very long. They kill the rabbit, and then like a few minutes later, they're done. So here they ran up here. I can hear him feeding. I can't feel my hands. Give him a little bit of a bur birth here. Uh, doll. <laughs> there we are. All right. Uh, we should be able to make a fire here. There we are. This tactic of um, using the wolf to hunt the deer is a very efficient way of preserving resources because you do not need to use anything to hunt it. So in the long run, um, the way you got to think about it, if you don't want to run out of arrows, is that um, an arrow, if you hit an animal with it, at least the simple arrows, not sure about the fire hardened ones it takes it, it, it loses 27% damage whenever you hit an animal with it that means that assuming you can kill an animal with one hit you can kill four animals with one arrow which sounds pretty good right but uh, on the other hand <clears throat> um, eventually that will be too much they eventually will, they'll break and you run out and things you know so what you could do instead, you could just uh, get the wolf to kill it for you. Then you don't use any resources, just the wood. I'm gonna eat this. And cook as much of this as we can. Keep this burning as well. I don't have that much wood actually. But we'll use what we can. Uh, the knife barely improves the time, uh, but I will use it for the rest of this harvest. Seventeen minutes. Seventeen minutes. The knife is fantastic for guts, primarily. That's what it's really good at. Another one. We have more water in the base, I believe. Not that one. This one. Uh, we'll use this as well. We'll get more coal later. Then we want to hide. We're going to use our hands for the hide. Because once it's uh, forward, it takes 40 minutes. Same as the knife, as you can see. This knife is faster, but that doesn't count. So we're going to use our hands. <clears throat> Here we go. Well, in 10 minutes, okay. Hey, carcass harvesting, level two, nice. 15 minutes for the gut. The wolf could potentially have killed another deer <laughs> because uh, the way that the deer scattered. There we go. And then we'll see if we can grab a few more sticks and things. That was pretty successful. Didn't use any resources at all for that other than wood. And this is cooking now. Let me see if I can get some sticks. Because I need this fire to burn a little bit longer. Is that you, Wolfie? You detect me from really far away. Go away. Good, Wolfie. It's 
stay stay away as well, please. Because I need to get some sticks and things. Oh, come on, that was meant to distract you, not attract you. <laughs> oh well. We <clears throat> should be alright though. Let's go back to the safety of our fire. That'll be no problem. Almost walked on that fire there, do you see? <laughs> Come here and then go away. I think he gave up. Feather. Yeah, he gave up. Any more feathers? I wouldn't say no. What you can do when you harvest a an animal, this is fully harvested now, is you could leave a little bit of meat like leave a tiny bit of meat, like for example this piece here. I could have not harvested that, for example. And that means that the carcass takes a bit longer to decay. Uh, it will decay in three days, or up to three days. Which means you can find more feathers. I tested this a while back, and what I found was that when... Uh, if you kill a deer, or... Oh, of any carcass, really. And you just leave it, you don't touch it. It takes three days for it to despawn. It can also despawn in a blizzard. But usually it doesn't, but it can. It has happened to me. Um, but it takes three days. If you harvest everything except for a little bit, or harvest everything except for the guts, or the hide, whatever, then it also still takes about three days. Uh, it can be a bit less if it's low condition, because it can deteriorate. If you harvest everything, so all this, it will despawn the next day. I think this is still good. Because we are in cover here. I cook this instead. And do this. And half a liter. Because we don't have any uh, that many sticks. I'm not going to carry the torch with me. Can I map in this? Ah, I can, cool. Might as well do it then. Yeah. Now we'll forever say deer carcass there. I don't think that I can light a torch with this. Or oh, rather well, I can, but it won't hold. Let's pick this up. We have one raw piece of meat, but... That's okay. I think the deer might be back here. Yes, no? Yes, they are. The animals will migrate back to their locations. If they get spooked away. So, like, they are kind of, like, roaming around here. And if you scare them away, they eventually just, like, start walking back. The moose is, is a good example. The moose spawns and walks over here. And if you scare it away, like over there, for example, it would just slowly start making its way back. I'm gonna see if I can grab this rabbit while I'm at it. Uh, just to get another rabbit going. I think there's only one rabbit. Oh, hello. You come back to me. What? I hit him. <laughs> come back here, you. I hit you. Come on. Where are you going? I'm seeing if the wolf is following me. If I miss again, I'm going to leave this guy. Okay. I didn't see another rabbit, so if there is one, it's behind the hill. 
Grab this torch, which is still burning. This was my big torch, which is kind of now dissipating. There's a stick. And I'll make a fire in here. <clears throat> what we have. Just to see if we can cook the rest. Then we'll start on the crafting. Come One on more the time. Fire. Also, I need a torch. At this point, uh, now we reach the stage of the game where I only need to carry one torch. One to, one to three torches. Come on, little fire. <clears throat> because the pur main purpose of the torch now is to start a fire by using only one match. Perfect. That's kind of like the point of the torch now. Uh, let's see if I can, but I will still carry more though if I'm carrying the fire. 15 minutes, okay, well, let's just use this to speed that up. And we will do this, put that on there. There's another crate here, which we'll use our hands for. Put that on there too. Uh, I'm not gonna break down, I could break down this. Yeah, I don't need that. Go six minutes. Can I harvest the meat here for that? Yeah, I think so. Well, we can do, we can do half. It's cooked, cooked. Put one of these pots on. Half a liter. Uh, put this to cook, and then harvest the rest of this too. Ten minutes, ten minutes. Uh, we might need slightly more. I don't suppose there's any more, is there? I don't think so. I have a stick. I, I can use this. Uh, a birch bark. No. Grab that. Cook that. 28 minutes. Should be fine. Boiled. We can make a tea. And I'm gonna put this on as well, because I want a better torch. That's better. Yeah. And then... We will sort ourselves out. Grab that. Take that. Take that. And grab a torch quickly as well. Okay. So we have another day height here we can put down to cure. We have some more guts, that's cured, but let's just leave these here. Pick up all this stuff, we're gonna sort this all out after though. This we're gonna put it here. I'm gonna pick these up, and we're gonna sort that out later. Let's also open this, now that we have a pry bar. Okay. That. And I think that is it. We can craft a little bit, but not very much. So I'm gonna douse this now. I don't have anything else to kill, do I? No. And we can uh, start on the bow. Where's the guts? I misplaced them. I need two guts. These are the two. One, two. We can start on that. I don't think we can get very far. No, we're not going to use that knife. We're going to use this one. We'll put two hours just to see, but eventually it will stop. There we are. Too, too dark. Then what we're going to do, we're going to eat this food. And also, is one of these small? No. We're going to go outside to drop some of the food outside so it lasts a bit longer. Food will last longer outside. Let's just drop that for now. 
And then we need to harvest this guy. And uh, we can just use our hands for that. Okay, I got dehydrated there, but that's okay. There we go. And if I wasn't already quite full, I would eat some low condition stuff here. Maybe I could do it anyway. There we are. Okay. Because I'm close to full health, this is a good time to eat some low condition stuff. This might give me too much. No, I should be fine. We can eat this. I think. Yep. Yeah. Wow, didn't give me food poisoning, how about that? Because if it had given me food poisoning, it wouldn't make a difference. I would lose a little bit of health, but I would be able to sleep it off, so it's okay. I'll sleep for 10 hours, and then it will probably be light enough to craft some more. And it is. So we're going to have a drink again. Then we're going to make the bowl. Eight days. We're just going to do this in one go, I think. And then it's time to make arrows. There we go. We'll probably get to cabin fever by the end of this. but There we go. We got the bow. There we bow. But that's not bad. We got the bow on day eight. I'm going to eat this. Probably do the food poisoning thing again before bed and eat that. Okay, then we're gonna make arrows. So, how many feathers do I have? I have 28, so what's that? Nine arrows. So, I can we have two of these, uh, sorry, three of these. And the thing is, I haven't actually found any tools, any simple tools or anything. So, that means I have to make these by hand. So let's make the shafts first. There we go. And then we're going to make the arrows. And because I don't have any of the tools, I have to make them by hand. So we're going to do that. You, you actually level archery by doing this. If you have the tools, it goes faster. So this takes an hour and a half. If you use simple tools, it's an hour, 12 minutes. If you use high quality tools, or just quality tools, it's 45 minutes, so it's much faster. We can make two, maybe three, and then it's too dark. Uh, too dark, though. Okay. What we're going to do now is, before we go to bed, let's organize this a bit. So, I'm going to wait to eat these things, because we don't really need them right now. They can be, like, extra food or something. This is like traveling food. I'm going to put this here, so decorating my base a little bit. I tend to carry these when I travel further distances. I have dog food. Peaches again. Uh, we'll probably eat the maple and the granola bar and stuff. There's only the cans I'm leaving here. Then we have an extra uh, of these, which you can put here. Uh, we will have a little collection of these here. Then we have some extra tools. Then, actually, then we're going to put the stuff that we're never going to use, which is this and that. Now we're going to be using that, because that's not intended. So we'll put this into our memento shelf, which can be here. These are clearly not intended for this difficulty, unless it's something that they haven't fixed yet, or they didn't make it very clear. So this is going to be our memento shelf. Yeah, it's kind of like hidden from you, which is fine, because not really meant to be used. I think those are the only ones I found, wasn't it? Then we got some books and stuff, but we can do that here. In fact, let's douse this while we do that. Then here we can put all the clothing that we don't use. Although this one I... Oh yeah, that one I want to repair. Then we have books that we're going to read, but not necessarily right now. These two are they're just firewood, really. We're going to put 12 matches in here. One of our accelerants. We'll put this in here. Teas will carry with us, except for... Uh, we'll put 
two of these in here and two of these in here for now anyway. And we don't need a marine flare and I'll carry one flare with me and put two sewing kits in here. With the, the arrowheads can wait. Um, the hacksaws we're going to put somewhere else. And then put three of these in there too. And then I guess that's it. We can put that in there too. Alright, that's good. And then we're going to put our hacksaws. Might break this down one day, but at the moment. We don't need two hacksaws. Uh, in fact, I don't know if we need any hacksaws. Actually, we're going to take the other one. Put that... Put that down here, maybe. Can I do it like this? Is that possible? Oh, you can. I like that, then. Uh, I think... And then we have two of these. Yeah, I'm using this one. We douse that. Put it... On here. For now. Then we carry this one, the other one. So now a bit lighter. We can also harvest these. And then it's about time to go to sleep, I say. And this time we're going to eat the food poisoning stuff. Because even if you get food poisoning, we can actually sleep longer. We can sleep for 10 hours. So we're going to eat low quality stuff. Oops, no, 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 not that one. This one. And then this one. This is what's likely to give us food poisoning. Wow. You got a resilient stomach here. No food poisoning. Alright. <laughs> Fine. Be that way. And then we're going to sleep. We'll put 10 hours, but we're not actually going to be able to sleep for 10 hours. It's not light yet. When the sun is above the horizon, so that the, the horizontal lines of the sun is above the horizon, that's when it's light and you can read and everything. I need to make some more water soon. And uh, let's pass some time. But there isn't really anything else we can do. We can't repair or read. There we are. Now it's above the horizon. You see there the little side lines of the of the crown. Sideline that is making up words. And then we can start making arrows. So we're gonna just do this for the rest of the day pretty much. There we go. Uh let's just finish eating this. There's a blizzard outside anyway, so I can't go hunt the bear. Uh, I can make three more, ar four more arrows. We're gonna put two. And then we'll put the last two. And see if the weather ends. That seems to have ended. It's now late in the day, but that's okay. We have our arrows. Nine arrows. So now we are good to go. And I'm gonna put the other arrowheads in here, as well as the. I guess that's it really, actually. The rest we're going to take with us for now. The feather we can put in here too. Let's eat this. And let's have this. The only thing is that killing the bear, we don't really have much wood, is the only problem. So we'll, we'll see if we can find the bear, but we'll pick up some wood along the way. It's very windy as well, but we'll do what we can. It's not particularly cold though. So we'll just pick up some sticks. We could go into the cave and get coal, but it's it's not hasn't been that long since I was there. So I don't think that's going to work. Instead we're gonna pick up all the sticks we find. I didn't repair that uh, item I had. Uh, I'm gonna avoid picking up branches if I can. More sticks the better. For warmth and fire duration. We don't need to cook the entire bear if we kill the bear. That's okay, we can cook the bear later. But we need to get the hide and we need to harvest all the meat so we can cook the meat later. That's what's important. A 
lot of sticks up here, that's good. So the bear should be behind this corner here, so we're going to try and get the bear. There is a trick you can use to kill the bear very easily, which we are not going to do. Which is an exploit, which is that what you can do is you can create a campfire. So the cam a campfire will keep the bear at bay as long as you are near the campfire. So what you can do is you create a campfire, then you shoot, you shoot the bear and let him charge you. And then you, then you just stand there and wait for him to bleed out. You can even pass time and then the, the bear will just die. But that's a very cheesy exploit that's it's a bit silly. And it's clearly not intended and it's not something I'm going to do. So I'm going to hunt the bear the more or less normal way. And I'm going to hunt the bear even though I can't eat the bear meat. Well, I can eat the bear meat, but it gives me parasite risk. But that's, that's okay because... What I want from the bear is is the hide. I want the bear hide. That's what I want. And then the meat also is great because it allows us up cooking and it gives lots of calories. And even if I were to get parasites, it's fine because I can then eat more predator meat. Now where has the bear gone? I've got a really bad wind here, but he should be around here somewhere. He's probably in this little open area up ahead there. So let's see if we can get a vantage position. The thing about hunting bears is you need to always have an escape plan. Same goes for moose. A wolf and a deer not so much because the deer is not going to fight back. And a wolf, uh, you'll probably kill the wolf. But a bear and a deer is a bit different. Sorry, a bear and a moose is a bit different because they can really hurt you. But we need to see if we can find somewhere to stand. Like, for example, up here. Where is this bear? He should be around here. This is like his domain. It's strange that I can't see or hear him. Here, berry bear. I think this is a little den right here. There he is. Is he sleeping? He's sleeping. Oh, I hate to disturb your sleep, but um, this is happening. I wonder if I can wake him, actually. Is that possible? I guess not. Okay, then we need to shoot him. This complicates things. Let's see, where's my escape route for this? Can I go up here, for example? I think maybe you can. You can shoot rabbits to level up archery, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's a waste of an arrow. Just use the stone. Can you get up here? No, uh, you can, but it's a little bit tricky. I'm not sure I would recommend doing it. Unless I can hit the bear from here. <laughs> I could give it a try. Could give it a try. Uh, oof, difficult. I think it would have to be somewhere maybe here. Let's give it a try. Okay, it's a bit higher. Okay, then. There we go. Hey, come back here. I didn't mean for you to run off like that. But well, at least we got him. I would have preferred that he didn't run away, but well. If I can hit him again while he's running, then he will attack me. But if I do that, I need to have an escape plan again, of course. I would prefer if he didn't run like five million miles away.
Is he running along the side there? I think he is. He's running pretty far. Come back here, bear. I didn't mean for you to run this far. Work though, he's bleeding out. You see that tactic I used there to aim? Was you if you if you want to aim that way, you choose a point and then you try not to move. So you saw I shot the first arrow and it was too short, but I didn't really move, so it was all a matter of just adjusting the aim. Of course, you know, the bear was stationary, so that makes it a lot easier. Ow. I need some first aid soon. Okay, so the bear is gone, so I need to find the bear now. You will bleed out. I mean, I can find him in the morning, but I'd rather not. We're gonna bandage this sprain. He will be out here somewhere. You can go inside and sleep and wait it off, and he will be out there somewhere. There's his blood trail. But I would like to get the hide now, at least. Let's see if we can find him. I mean, if he dies near the camp office, that'd be okay. Because <laughs> then we can just uh, harvest him next to that and sleep there. I haven't even been to the camp office yet. I'm just going to follow this trail here. Well, it's still uh, f somewhat fresh. It would be nice if you didn't run too far. As long as you're near somewhere indoors, it's fine. Oh, come on. <laughs> Running zigzag there. I think I can hear him. And oh, there he is, yeah. He's going back towards uh, the den. Uh, so what we could do here is... He's going to bleed out eventually. But what we could do here is... We can just follow him. He's going to bleed out anyway. He's going to make his way back to his den, which is nearer to our base anyway. And we can just harvest him that. The only drawback is he could die on the slope heading home. Which would be a little bit annoying. Um, but I think it'd be alright. Also, at the moment, like he's got an arrow in him. And I'm, I'm warm, so... I'm not going to freeze to death, so I think it'd be all right. I'm just going to let him walk back. Let him do his thing. Then I'll pick up my arrow afterwards. He isn't bleeding, though. Yeah, no, he is. He's bleeding. He might die on the slope, but if he does, then he does. It's fine. We'll pick up some wood and things while we wait. And we'll harvest him. Take what we can back to the base. Pick up lots of wood in the meantime. Prepare for a fire. He's basically on the clock now, so. You head home, bear. I'll give you your space. He should be around the corner here now, I think. Yeah, there he is, yeah. He's heading home. You do that. I'm going to grab this stuff. Make sure I don't... ...attract him. We could actually map here. That will speed things up a little bit. We can do like this. There he is. And we can map this. It's dusk, so I can't be far behind. He should be further up now. Cooking pot. Book. I barely moved. <laughs> I mapped this at least, the deadfall area.
Well, you continue your journey, Mr. Bear. It's kind of hard to spot like this. He really blends in. But yeah, you do that, and I'll go and find you after. I'm going to try to avoid using a bandage just to save the bandage and get some sticks and stuff while he's walking. It doesn't really matter where he dies as long as he's closer to home. I could have killed him when I saw him and he would be closer to camp office, but one of the issues with that is that if he doesn't die by the second shot, he's going to run away again. Then I'm just going to follow him. Follow in the shadow of the bear. And wait for him to die. And if he doesn't die, if he sits back down, then I'm going to shoot him again. But he should die. Because he is bleeding, as you can see. So we're just going to follow him. I'm just going to auto-walk. Auto-crouch behind him. This is the last journey of the bear. <laughs> Am I carrying meat? I don't think so. No. And he can't detect me then. We'll see. I'll just follow him and uh, take it from there. I mean, I'm stalking the bear at this point. <laughs> uh, I could just pass time. Which will be fine too. But one thing is that if you... If you go inside now, if you go inside, say, Trapper's Cabin, and then I pass time or sleep, the issue with that is that the animals can bug out if you do that. Um, so it's possible the bear would return to his den. And then he would uh, reset. Like the arrow would fall off him. And then he would just not die. And you'd have to shoot him again. Which isn't the end of the world, but that could happen. So to avoid that happening, I'm just going to let him die out in the open. And I'm just going to follow him. He's kind of hard to see, but... Uh, it'd be alright. And then we'll make a fire, probably. And we'll harvest uh, as much of him as we can. I'll take it back to base. And... Uh, now hopefully he dies by his den or somewhere there if not I'm going to have to shoot him again these guys are at the arrow in him as you see it can take, take him a long time to die and that's because I shot him in the leg like if I shot him in the head or something he would bleed out faster but he's injured in the leg so he's going to take a while to bleed out Now, very important, do not mistake him for sleeping. <laughs> We're getting cold now, but it's alright. So this is patience. This is patience hunting. Just taking your time, letting him bleed out. So we only used one arrow to kill him, if that's the case. Although I missed two. You can actually see the condition. It should be 3 or 5%. Uh, five, as you can see. These are 95, so these are the two arrows that landed in the snow. When you miss and the arrow lands in the snow, it takes 5% damage. Unless it's kind of like sideways. If it kind of like glances on the snow, then it's uh, 3%. So you can basically miss 20 times. <laughs> or rather, you can miss 19 times. And then hit the bear once, and the bear will die. Okay, Bear, are you close to dying? Because uh, you are really taking your time bleeding out. He should die, though. He's going back to his den. I'm just going to let him do it. I mean, this is uh, a long, dark experience you probably didn't think you'd have, right? Stalking a bear. Slowly bleeding out. I could just kill him here, but I am a bit worried that he will run away again. What we could do, though, unless he goes to sleep, is to get his attention and get him over to Trappers. In fact, that's probably a good idea. Because then he will follow me to Trappers instead of going to his den. So we're going to do that. We need to be a bit further away, though. And then, if that's the case, we need to do this.
Okay, let's see if he can spot us now. There we go. So he's still bleeding out. But now instead of going to his den, he's going to follow us. But I can get him all the way to Trapper's cabin. It's going to make harvesting him a lot easier. So you follow me, Mr. Bear. And if you die on the way, then so be it. You die. But if not, I could maybe kill you in Trapper's cabin. I've never felt so cold. We can even cheese it by going indoors. If he gets too close, go back out again. I'm gonna get cold now, but that's fine. This is a long bear hunt. <laughs> a very long bear hunt. You can do it other way. So you can dance with the bear in the open. I really didn't want to do that here. You can, uh, if you have a better vantage position, you can shoot him in the head when he's walking about. There's all sorts of ways. But because he was sleeping, options were a bit limited in terms of how I could uh, shoot him. Come here, Mr. Bear. We're in the snowy darkness. And it would be nice if we could start seeing you soon. Come on. You don't want to get too close, though, because then he'll start charging. And you want to get, don't want to get too far away, because then he'll give up. Tidy my mess. See if we can keep line of sight here. Yeah. Get him a bit closer. I'm surprised he hasn't bled out already. It's been a little while now. I think it can take up to five in-game hours. Oh, that was a weird noise. I think it can take up to five in-game hours for an animal to bleed out. If you hit him in the in a non-critical area like the leg. They'll eventually die. But for now, we're going to get him up here to trappers. Then I'm going to try and shoot him. See if I can kill him closer to trappers. You can barely see, because there's so much snow and dark. Come on. I hope you, the viewer, can see this, because... The recording of my game is actually brighter than in-game. So what you're seeing is going to be brighter than what I'm seeing. Okay, when he's closer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to shoot him in the face. I'm going to wait for him to, like, basically aggro me. Shoot him in the face. And then he's going to charge up here. And I'm going to stand on this side of the fence. Which makes it harder for him to reach me. And then I can shoot him again. That's the idea, at least. He might run away again, but hopefully he won't. He could bleed out. I mean, he is... Uh, he should bleed out soon. I mean, he's been bleeding for a while. Gosh, it is heavy, heavy snow here. Okay. Back here, I hit you four times. He's stuck. Are you seriously gonna take five hour arrows and then run away? you five times and you didn't die. <laughs> One resistant bear. Okay, well then that changed the whole plan. We just gotta go get him again. I think one of the arrows landed here or did I hit all of them? Okay, well, I has one of them. Yeah. I think I missed another one, but we'll find in the morning. Okay, well, we're gonna change plans then. And uh, wait for this guy to bleed out. We can check the stats by going here and says... This bear's killed 
zero. But now it's the weather's terrible. We're just going to um, we're gonna go inside and just uh, go out go out the next day. We'll find them because uh, all those arrows in them and he didn't die. And uh, let's eat some more of these because we have so many of them now. We can put some in storage, but we'll probably take some for the journey uh, as well. Gosh, this is a annoying bear. Very, very annoying. Have a drink. Then he's gonna sleep and recover. And then we'll go find him. He should be dead out there, and if he's not, then he's wandering about in his usual location. And he hopefully still has my arrows in him. We are back. Uh, let's put some of this. I <laughs> survived so 10 days exactly. I <laughs> have a completely round number there. I've never seen that before. <laughs> I'm going to put 24 of these in here. I'm going to eat this. All right, let's find this bear. Hey. All right. Is he dead? Bears killed one. Okay, so he's dead somewhere. Uh, I shot... I think I hit all my arrows. Or I missed... I missed two in the beginning and I missed one at the end. We can actually check. So if you look here on wildlife bow hits, I have six. And I shot nine. So okay, so I missed one, which I think is the one I picked up. Because I missed two in the beginning when he was sleeping. Then I hit him in the leg. And then I hit him five more times. And then I missed one, which was the arrow I picked up. It didn't break or anything. If so, it would have been there. So I hit him six times. Six arrows, really? And you're still alive? Uh, okay, we got to find him now. He ran this way. There were crows flying overhead. Which means that we have weather for crows. Right? That's the only thing that those crows mean. A lot of people thought that crows flying overhead in the sky across the across the Heisen in a horizontal line, they thought that that meant that the weather was changing. But that's not what it means. It just means that the weather is in a state that allows for crows to be out. That's all it means. Hey, he, di he died here. Right by Max's last stand. All right. Look how many arrows is in this guy. He's just peppered with arrows. I mean, this guy had... Uh... <laughs> he had his uh, work cut out for him. I mean, he was a tough one. I'll, I'll give him that. Gosh. Well, it was the end of the line for you, Bear. Now, you can pick these arrows off, or you can click the carcass. And you see, you take the arrows. This one fell off, so it doesn't count. Now we got all our nine arrows back. And actually, uh, this is a good example of arrow condition. You can see here that these arrows here, these four were the ones that I hit the bear with. These two were the ones I also hit the bear with, but you can see they're 5% lower condition. Why is that? That's because these two are the arrows I picked up that I missed the bear with when he was sleeping. They landed in the snow. Remember, they were 95%. So... You had 100% arrows, I hit the bear, and you lose 27% condition. So then that means they are 73. And these are the same ones, but they are also damaged by the snow. Whenever you take the bow, it equips the arrow with the lowest condition. So right now, I have this one that's 54. And by the way, if you're wondering why it's 54, it's because this is the arrow that I missed, and I hit the... Um, the rock behind the bear and that takes a lot of damage so if you do miss with arrows and hit the snow doesn't really matter but if you miss and you um hit the rock it does so much damage but i can show you so this is 54 if i now equip the bow and shoot and then i'll just shoot like that you can see in my inventory which arrow is missing it's the 54 arrow it always takes the lowest condition and then I pick this up, and this should say 49, and if not 49, it will be... 
51. 48, okay, it's rounded. So yeah, so there you go. So next time I shoot, I'm gonna shoot with this. And then that has one more hit in it on an animal and it'll break. So that's, that's what these percentages mean. That's how I know exactly what has been used for what. These have not been used. These hit the bear, these hit the bear and the snow. This one hit the rock and then the snow. <laughs> and that's how you, how I know what they're for. I spent a day kind of like figuring this stuff out. That's why I know these details. Okay. Get some feathers out of this too, cause Max is right here. So we can make more arrows. We might cook the bear later, but we'll see. We're gonna start now though. And we'll light the fire, I think, because we are getting a bit cold. How cold are we though? Minus eight. Yeah, it's a little bit cold. Let's make a fire. Oh, I forgot to put the cardboard matches back. That's another thing I shouldn't be carrying around. There we go, 47 sticks, that should do it. <laughs> we could quarter him because we're not that far away from the base. In fact, I might, I might do that. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on, little fire. Come on. Come on. And we will cook the bear, but we're not in a hurry to eat all of the bear. Put some of this on. There we go. And then we actually, we are going to quarter him. It will speed things up. He's barely frozen because he died. The timer probably started when I exited. It takes two hours to quarter. What we're going to do, we're going to first grab some of this meat with the hack, hacksaw. I'm going to put four kilos because then that can cook while we quarter. I'm gonna put that and that, and then we can quarter for one hour. So you can cancel quarter, you don't have to do it in one go. You start quartering, and then here. Let's see, 16 minutes, okay. Uh, I think in that case we'll grab this. We can make more arrows if we want now, because we have more feathers, but barely any. I think we need nine is fine. Okay, bear meat is cooked. Then we do this. And then we finish watering. I prefer using the hacksaw, because the hacksaw is easier to repair. And there we go. Some gravity-defying stuff. But we have our bear things. While we wait for this to cook, we could harvest some of this. Could use the knife, maybe, for that. One kilos. Lighten the load a little bit. Okay, I'll do another kilo then. And I think we're gonna take this back to base. Start a fire there. Now I'm going to be able to take it all in one go. How many torches do I have? That's alright. Okay, so we're going to grab this first. This is going to attract a lot of wolves, but that's okay. And we'll take... I if I can drop any of this gear. Can I take one or two of these? I think two was a bit much. We'll instead take this. No, I don't want to be higher than 45, so we're going to drop also these two. We'll take the stuff, put it back in base, and let the curing process begin. And then we have a bear. And uh, you only need one bear hide to make the bear coat. So that's fantastic. Before, you needed two hides to make the bear coat, but now it's just one. I think you still need two hides to make the bedroll, though. But the thing is, the bear takes 12 days to cure. 
That's a long time. If I leave, uh, we're on day 10, right? Or day 11, I guess, now. So it's going to be killed by day 23. Um, that means that even if I now spend a day cooking, and then I go and kill a moose, spend a day cooking that, say three days, there'll still be eight days left after that. So what do you do in those eight days? Well, you can go out and kill more, there or more, there or craft, you can do whatever you want. Or what you can do is you can accumulate different things, like, you know, hides, put them to cure, and while they're curing, you go do something else. You go and do, go to the summit, go to Ash Canyon, or whatever. So yeah, all of those are options. But you could also stay put, you could stay here and make this your, your main region. Because you have the bow now, you have a lot of gear, so it is possible to just stay here as well. And just, uh, uh, you know, get settled in this place and then go out. You can also do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do this. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a fire here that can cook some stuff. I'm going to go inside first. And then here on the floor here, we'll put our bear coat. And here on the ground, we'll put our guts. And then also, before I forget, these matches are never to be used. They are mementos. They can go in there, in our memento drawer. Then we're going back out. And I'm going to make a fire here. I'm going to boil some water. And then collect the other meat and bring it back here. It's a lot easier to cook it here. This is why I wanted Trappers to be the main base rather than Camp Office, because the bear is right there. I don't know if there's a moose here or not, but the bear is very close, so that's a good source of fuel for the future. Put most of this on. There we go. Uh, put these, and we're going to make water rather than cook. And drop that. Okay, and then, seeing as we're going to... We can actually eat one of these. Because it's only going to give us 1% parasite risk. I'm willing to, to risk that. And now the thing is, we're going to have to carry that meat bag. And that's very heavy. They weigh a lot. Like, this one weighs like 10 kilos. So it's worth dumping some heavy stuff. Just put on the heavy filter and drop some stuff. Drop that, drop that, this, 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 this as well. Sure, this, this, that. Everything that's heavy. But now we hardly weigh anything. Sure, we uh, also don't have our weapon. But we have a torch, so that's okay. Then we can carry a lot more of this stuff back and faster. Uh, we are high health, we are warm, we should be fine. Shouldn't be an issue. There we go. And then we're gonna grab all of this. Uh, if we're lucky, we can do it in one go. We might have to do it in two goes. Looks like... I don't even do this in two goes. I mean one go, sorry. See see how slow we go. We have to do it in two two sessions. Pick up this as well. It's a stick. Let me just run. Another thing you could do. So one thing that could be done now. Uh, I mean, I'll see what I do. But one thing that could be done is to uh, just get situated. So for example, what could be done now is you cook the bear and then you go and kill a moose if you can find one. If not, kill some deer or maybe wolves. Just get a lot of hides curing so you can start crafting the stuff eventually. And while you're doing all that, 
Um, sure, you could go to the summit in Ash Canyon, but you could do it later also. What you could do instead is you could read your books. You got a lot of books, right? And I have collected quite a few of them. I could read those. Uh, if I read all of them, I could go to uh, Milton, where I left some more books, go collect that. And then I can explore Mystery Lake and see what other loot I can find here in Mystery Lake. So, yeah. There's all sorts of things that you can do. You really should do it however you want to do it. The reason I tend to go to Ash Canyon early is just to be able to carry more stuff. So what I like to do is I, I like to kill a bear and a moose. A moose as well, uh, just because with a moose you can get the hide curing for uh, uh, for the, uh, the satchel. Then while that's curing, I can go pick up the technical backpack. And then once I have that and come back here, all the stuff is cured. And then I can make the moosehide satchel. And then that journey means that by the end of that, and by then we'll be on day 25 or something. So by day 25 or somewhere thereabout, we'll have technical backpack as a wolf. We'll have uh, the moose satchel and the bear coat. So we'll have some really, really good stuff. Uh, most importantly, we'll have the two backpacks. You know, technical backpack and the moose backpack. Which means that we can carry a lot of stuff. And it's really handy to be able to carry a lot of stuff when you want to go exploring. Okay, when I pick this up, he's going to turn around and, and aggro me. See? Because you can smell it right away. They only smell it when I carry it, apparently. But So that's one of the reasons, one of the motivations I like to go to Ash Canyon early. It's not because you need to get stuff before they deteriorate anything. It's just that uh, it makes it easier to explore the rest of the world because you can carry more stuff. If you have the Mooseite Satchel and the Technical Backpack, you can carry 45 kilos of stuff without being heavy. And that is really, really handy. So I like to get some hides, put them here to cure, and then afterwards, then you can um, um, uh, craft that stuff. And then after you've done all that stuff, then you can go exploring. And you have lots of baggage space, lots of stuff where you can carry things, and you'll be all right. Did you give up? No. Well, I'm going to put all this back. Could kill the wolf, but I don't really need to. Yeah, there we are. You go away now. 51 minutes. And then while that's cooking, I might as well start harvesting these. And I think we will use probably the hack. So that's 14, that's 11. Because 32 minutes versus 40. Yeah, we'll just use hack. So once we find a, uh, a toolkit, we can repair it. So it's fine. Six minutes. Use it for that. And that's boiled. And we could... I think we have enough wood to cook. No, we don't. I was going to say we have enough wood to cook these, but we don't. Then we're going to make half a liter instead. Uh... Yeah, and I think that's it. And then we'll harvest this. Might harvest the rest indoors. We've been outdoors a lot now, so cabin fever shouldn't be an issue. I'm going to harvest all of this, because if I leave this for later, these can be despawned. Like, these these do despawn. And you don't want that. Um, so I do recommend harvesting them. Okay, we don't have any more wood, so I'm going to take this. Yes, I'm going to pick these up. We have enough ink now. And then I'm going to take these inside and harvest them. Leave them outside here. 
Wolf is going for another deer. Uh, but this deer will probably be able to run away. Uh, but also, like, I'm not gonna fiddle with that. Can I carry all of these? No. <laughs> okay, so let's quarter these. We're gonna do that in one go now. The hacksaw. It can take a few hours, but then we get it done. At the safety of our home. And we also level up harvesting skill. And then we'll put all this stuff outside and we'll cook it later. The main thing we want is the hide and then the rest we can cook later. The meat bags are really, really heavy. There we are. Take these. Uh, and actually, just to reduce cabin fever, what you can do, seeing as it's not that cold, you can do like harvest this a little it's bit until it gets too cold and then you go inside. Then at least you reduce cabin fever a little bit. As long as you don't have the meat on you when you harvest, shouldn't attract any wolves. Might even be able to finish all of this. Let's just do it. Yeah, we'll get a little bit cold, but I'm just going to do it. There we go. Look at all this meat we got now. It's bear meat, sure, but it's still meat. I'm going to pick these up. And then we're going to go inside. And sleep. And then tomorrow we're going to look for the moose. It's so cold. And I have parasite risk of 1%. I'm willing to ha accept 4%. But I'm going to wait with that and eat this. And also we can start getting rid of some of these. Uh, let's have, we can eat this also now. It doesn't matter if we get food poisoning. So eat that. Then we'll eat some more of these. We can also craft stuff. But we're going to wait with that until after I get the moose. And then have a drink, and then we sleep. There we go. And then we sleep for 10 hours. I don't think we'll be able to sleep for 10 hours, but we're going to do it anyway. And there we have it. All right. Okay, it's not quite light yet, but this is a good end to end this episode. Drank his own pee doesn't seem so crazy. Right so we got the bear. It was a little bit of a struggle in that he took six arrows and still did not go down. So that was much more complicated than I thought it would be. That tactic I use is quite a good one because you can lure the bear to trappers, stay behind a fence, and the bear will try to reach you, but he can't. And then you can just kill it. But six arrows later, he still didn't die. But we got it. We harvested everything. We'll cook it later, though. But we got the bear hide, that's what we wanted. And we have food, if we want to eat parasite risk food, we have lots of that too. So we're pretty golden now. But I'm going to go find a moose next time and see if we can get that satchel. And then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, see you next time, survivors. And bye-bye.